Hi, welcome to my studio. I'm Trisha, and today I am going to show you how to make a art journal uh, or a sketchbook, or they also call them junk journals because it is a collection of old ticket stubs, letters, uh, receipts, cards, old paintings that you may have done or have lying around that you don't care about ripping up. Um, I went through my uh, mother and grandmother's old scrapbooks. They were just tucked away. Nobody was looking at them. Um, I left the precious things but pulled a couple of fun things that didn't really mean anything to me or anyone else um, and used those so it's got a vintage feel to it which is, is fun. Um, these are great as uh, journals and sketchbooks, uh, especially for the person who's intimidated by the blank page. We do have a few blank pages in here, but um, you know, the majority of them are not blank, and so it's really nice. Um, you can use them as inspiration to get started on your thoughts or your sketches. So I'm going to take you through. I'm going to show you how to make what's called a signature, which is binding them. Um, in groups, I've got three signatures in here so I can get this many sheets in my journal. So um, it's really pretty easy and it's a lot of fun. And let's get started. All right, here is an overview of the supplies that you're going to need. To begin with, you're going to need a collection of some old cards, letters, brochures, receipts, uh, vintage paper from old books, um, old paintings, whatever you have lying around that you think would make a good uh, part of your journal, insert for your journal. Then you're going to need some thread and some needles. Uh, I have a heavier thread, this is called hemp thread, and then this is a quilting thread, good sturdy threads. Some needles that'll fit those. Some wax uh, is not necessary, but I tell you it's wonderful. If you can run your thread through the wax, especially the hemp cord, certain um, cords that are not smooth, it really helps in the sewing process. Um, you'll definitely need an awl. Very helpful, especially when you have thicker signatures, thicker bundle of paper. Then I have this Cantone canvas pad. Um, I used a piece of this canvas. Um, this is not necessary, but I like it because it is heavy duty for my binding or my, my edging there. Um, you could use a heavier weight paper, a laminated piece of paper, uh, a fabric of some sort, um, really whatever you can you know find that's kind of sturdy. Uh, then you're going to want some binder clips to hold things together. You're going to want some paper, some watercolor paper is what I used, or a mixed media paper, a little bit heavier, nicer paper that is going to be a part of your book, but it is going to hold, this is what's going to kind of hold your groupings of paper together. And But this will also be a page in your book. So watercolor paper, mixed media paper, something a little bit uh, heavier weight. I have an old uh, painting that I ended up tearing up and using as my front cover. You can you do an old painting, you could laminate a photo, you could, you know, do a, a collage of some sort. I, really, your imagination is your only limitation there. Um, so something for your front cover. And then you will need something to cut your materials with. If you have a paper cutter, that's wonderful. If not, a ruler, uh, an X-Acto knife or scissors will do the job just fine. And of course, you're going to need a pencil to do a little marking there. And then I have this wonderful stuff I'm going to show you. It is not uh, mandatory, but it's it's very helpful and it goes great with a lot of projects. So um, the Scotch Positionable Mounting Adhesive. You can make your own stickers, um, do all kinds of wonderful things with it. Uh, so that is an option, but it is not necessary. So here is an overview of your supplies that you will need. And this is again what our final piece is going to look like or something along those lines. You see my canvas on the edge here, my 
This is my watercolor paper that I paint, decorated and painted. Um, this is an old, some old fabric that I found. I just wanted to decorate it a little bit more. You can do that, but you do not have to do that. So let's get started. Okay, so I have collected, ooh, I just lost a couple, a bunch of old magazine clippings, brochures, letters, um, this was a telegram, an old painting, wedding invitation, a whole bunch of, I went through my mother's scrapbooks um, and left, believe me, I left a lot of stuff there, but I pulled out things that were falling out. Um, Here's another one, and I put together, I couldn't do it all in one. Each one of these things, these collections are called signatures. And um, I got my pages so that they all measure approximately uh, four, I'm sorry, six by eight. This is actually six by nine. They will vary because some of them may be a little smaller. I think this one, even the center, you can see it's smaller than the piece before it. Um, so you will notice, you know, that it's okay if you've got smaller pieces of paper in there, but um, you want to keep them approximately uh, that, you know, approximately that uh, six by eight or six by nine. Um, so here's one that I've already, you know, sewn together. It's all, I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, but all of these I've got put together and I put them on the outside of a piece of watercolor paper. So you don't have to do that. Um, I like to, it just kind of collects them like a little folder. And again, this is called a signature. Each grouping of these separate is called a signature. Uh, I figure when I put this together, this will give me a blank piece of paper to do some watercolor or sketching or whatever on. I could do it here. I could even do it here. I mean, these pages do not have to be blank for me to be able to sketch and paint and write on. In fact, I kind of like it that way. It's not a blank canvas, if you will. Sometimes people are very intimidated, and I'm one of them, by a blank canvas. So, um, and I'll and show you maybe at the end how we can also put some, um, you know, a, a little bit of white paint that's maybe still transparent, but if it's too much, like say this one, it's a little bit too much, for me to write on, I could put a little bit of transparent white paint over the top of it. Um, but so that is, I have three signatures that are covered by that watercolor paper. And actually, I am going to cut one of them right now on my cutting board. As I said, if you do not have a cutting board, um, just use your... Uh, Let's see, we're going to do that nine by six. Just to use your ruler and an exacto knife. And I'm going to fold that in half. And that is going to kind of be the cover of my. This is where a bone folder comes in nicely. Again, something you do not have to have, but you could use a credit card or a hotel key card. Um, just to kind of make that a nice clean fold. And I'm gonna put this in here. And again, look at that, it's not perfect, that's okay. That's kind of what gives, that what's gonna give this journal um, its character. So um, now that we've got, I've got three signatures is what they're called. You could do one and this could be your, you know, your scrapbook as is, but I'm gonna show you kind of a different how to bind it and put all three of these together in one, so this is gonna be my journal, my scrapbook, my sketchbook, um, my art, the column junk journals, um, the three of these together. So I'm gonna show you first of all how to stitch the binding, and then I'm gonna show you how to put the three of these together with a cover and a bound edge. 
Okay, so now that I have my signatures put together with these approximately, I folded them, you see, they're all approximately six by nine or eight. You can see I put all these together and I fold them all in half or vary in size, that's okay. And here's my piece of watercolor paper. And I've got them all folded in half and my watercolor paper around the outside of it or any kind of paper or no paper, it's up to you. You do not have to have that. Um, then I did forget to mention in the um, materials list, um, some paper clips or some binders just to hold these together the way that you want them. Don't worry if your edges are not even or straight, you know, get them the way you like them. But that's all character of the book is to be a little, sometimes it's probably better to do it maybe in this direction. All right, so I'm gonna put one here and one here. So there's my paper clips together, okay? Um, now get your ruler out and I'm looking for, you know, it's about six. I'm gonna put it kind of centered on there. And I am going to start with the center and just mark off a half an inch. And I'm not gonna do the end one. Okay, now you're gonna take your awl and with your awl, you're going to poke through all the layers. So I kind of, sometimes it helps to keep it a little bit on this fold when you do it. And I'm just gonna press as hard as I can to get most of the way through. All the way through is ideal. So now here's my back side, um, and this is what I do on the back side, is I will go back and I will do it in reverse to kind of open it up a little bit more. Now, next thing you need is your thread. I am using the hemp cord or hemp thread um, just because I, it's a little bit heavier. It's not necessary with this, but I just kind of like the, the rough look of it. Um, and then if you have any kind of wax, this I got at the sewing store. Um, and it's a good idea to wax your thread, pull your thread through the wax, unless you have purchased, which they do have, uh, wax already waxed thread. It's just the wax helps it to glide through, especially if you're using a thinner thread. Um, it helps avoid any kind of knots. So it's a good idea, especially if you're using a thinner thread. And then get your needle. Um, you know, you want a needle, a good strong steady needle, one that's got an eye that's big enough for your thread, obviously. And you don't want the needle to be too big unless you've got really big holes. Um, I do not know to tell you what size needle this is, but maybe you can see, but something that fits my hemp cord. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we are going to sew it up. This is called a saddle stitch. And I like to start in the middle. Um, you can start either from the back side and come up or from the inside and go down. I like to start on the outside. That's where your knot's gonna be, so keep that in mind. This is not gonna show in the end. It's not gonna show because my spine's gonna be covered, so I don't mind that my knot is there. So I'm gonna do it from the outside and you wanna leave a tail 
that is, oh, probably an inch or two long, enough for you to be able to tie a knot with at the end. And then you're just gonna take it down into the next hole. And then I'm gonna bring it up in the next hole. You see, I'm bringing it up the next hole. And then down. Next hole, and then down, and then I'm going to come up again, I'm going to come up, and I want to be careful not to go through my thread if I can, so I'm going to go to the far side of the hole if I can, and come up. So that's what it's looking like. Again, oh, I got it caught on my, glad I saw that, got it caught on my paper clip there. So I gotta pull that through. Okay. Up, wanna make sure I don't go through the thread. And get it caught on the edges or the paper clip. Side. I'm going to go back through this hole. And there we have it. Inside, outside. And I'm going to take and I'm going to cut. I'm going to tie a knot. And I'm going to trim my knot. And just leave it like that. My paper clips off. There is my signature. There it is. Everything's bound in there nice. All right, so I have two of them. I'm going to work on the third one and then I'll be back. All right, so now I've clamped my three signatures together. I've put some glue on my paper plate and I am filling in the gaps with glue. This is why having flexible glue is key. Using an old paintbrush, I forgot to put that on the supply list. Now, all right, so once I've got glue all along the spine, my clamps are still there. I'm gonna take one more clamp if you have these clamps and I'm gonna put it, hopefully it won't, won't get on any glue and down the center and that's how I'm gonna leave it to dry. All right, so now my glue is dry and I can take my clips off 
And now I'm ready to create my binding and decorative cover. So I've taken my canvas that I had the sticky back on, like this one, and I've pulled it off. And now what I'm going to do is put it around my grouping here of signatures. And this is where you're gonna pull your front cover and your back cover that you've already cut approximately to size. And you're going to line it up. You want a little bit of overhang. You're gonna line it up where you want it and just make a little mark approximately where you want to line up that canvas. I'm going to do the same thing on the back. It's not real sticky, which is good. It's just enough that's going to hold it in place. And I'm going to make my marks. Pencil, I can go back and erase it. I don't want it to show. But there's what my book's going to look like. Okay, so now I can open it up. It's still a little sticky there. Well, the glue wants to stick already, doesn't it? All right, I kind of, I guess I don't need those pencil marks because we've already got it lined up. Now I'm going to take some of my glue. paint my glue on. You know, it's probably better to glue it again. Go back to the spine and put your glue on the spine of your signatures rather than on the canvas directly because you might put too much, go too wide. Not a whole lot. And then I'm going to line it up in the center. I'm going to let that dry. Yeah, it's not making contact there. I'm pressing down on it like this so that it's making contact with the back. And you may even be a good idea, again, to just leave it, give it a little pressure and leave it like this to dry. All right, now for the finishing touches. Uh, everything's dry. Everything's held together really well with my stitching and then my layers of glue. We've got a nice book here. I just pulled out some old fabric and I found some old vintage lace that I had that I thought was cool. It had a ribbon already attached to it so I could use that as a marker for my book. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, you know, if you have something like that, great. And I found a in my scrap box this old key that I thought was kind of cool. So I stitched that down. And then I have this um, leather pleather. I'm not sure what it is that that's going to be my tie up. So I'm just going to hot glue these things down. And for my tie, in order to figure out how long I want it to be, I'm going to leave it a tail. I've got a tail that looks like it's that's a good size to tie with and then I'll wrap this around. I want it to go around two times and see if the 
the next one is about, look at that, wow, is about the same length. So I did pretty good there. Um, so wrap it around until you get the two tails hanging off that look about the right size. And I'm kind of pulling them taut. Okay, so then I'm going to undo it because I don't want it wrapped all the way around and tied. And then I'm going to put my decorative piece on. Now, you know, maybe you want to decorate the spine. Maybe you don't want to decorate it at all. Um, if you don't want to decorate it at all like that, you may want to put uh, your own, your, your leather underneath the canvas area. Um, you don't have to even put a closure on it. Uh, that's, you could put a button here and, you know, wrap something around that. There's, or even an elastic. I've seen the elastic that goes around. So there's a number of different ways to finish it. This is the way I'm doing it. Make sure you've unwrapped it though, because if I were to glue it down, I wouldn't be able to do it. So once I glue it down, then I'll be able to, then it's going to come around here and it's going to tie like that. So it will go around like that. So, and I want it approximately in the center. And then I am going to put my glue with my glue gun on my fabric. And I'm just gonna, you could use a fabric glue. Um, I think a fabric, fabric a glue would work, um, being that this is fabric and the canvas is kind of fab fabric, but I thought that this glue, the glue gun would work better with that. So, ow, 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 it's hot. I'm going to put it down where I want it. Press it in place. And there you have it. Now let's give it a test. Wrapping it around, around here, and I can tie it up. Got tangled there. There's my finished piece. One last thing you may want to do is if you have some extremely busy pages in your book, you can cover them with a light coating of gesso or some, even some light uh, transparent or, you know, really light coating of paint. And that will uh, enable you to be able to paint or draw or write on it without too much going on in the background. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the class. I hope you make lots of uh, wonderful creative journals to keep for yourself and to give to others. Thanks so much. See you later.